Viewer discretion. Advised, the following story contains graphic and distressing details. If you are a fan of spine-chilling tales, mysteries, and the supernatural presented in a captivating narrative, you have come to the right place. We upload new videos three times a week, which are Mondays, Wednesday, and Fridays. So don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with our weekly uploads. On the chilly morning of February 2nd, 2012, a young man steered his car off a four-lane highway in Anchorage, Alaska and into a snow-covered parking lot. Amongst dozens of parked cars, he parked his vehicle right in front of a small, brightly teal-colored shack known as the Common Grounds Coffee Shop. This establishment was where the young man worked as a barista. Approaching the white door that served as the employee entrance, he reached for his key to unlock it. However, to his surprise, the door was already unlocked. Samantha Koenig, an 18-year-old employee who worked the previous night was responsible for securing the shop after her shift. She seemed responsible, and this behavior was out of character for her. Nevertheless, the young man shrugged it off as a simple mistake and proceeded inside. The moment he stepped in, he sensed that something was amiss. It appeared as though Samantha had abruptly left during her shift without bothering to tidy up. Napkins lay scattered on the floor, and the atmosphere felt strangely eerie and unsettling. As the young man surveyed the coffee shop's disarray, his mind raced through possible explanations for Samantha's unusual behavior. Towels were strewn about, cups still lay on the counters, and the cash register was left unlocked. It became evident to him that something was terribly wrong. They had been robbed. Hurriedly, he contacted his boss to inform him about the shocking discovery. On the previous night, Samantha had asked her boyfriend Dwayne to pick her up from the common grounds after her shift. Dwayne, who was caught up at work, arrived at around 8.30 p.m., 30 minutes past her shift's scheduled end. As he pulled into the parking lot, he noticed the coffee shop was eerily dark and appeared closed for the night. Anxious to find Samantha, Dwayne stepped out into the freezing cold and walked up to the coffee shop's window. Pressing his face against the glass, he peered inside, but there was no sign of her. Memories of their bitter text message argument from earlier that night flashed through his mind. Samantha had accused him of cheating, and he had brushed it off, seemingly indifferent. The altercation had been heated, and Duane couldn't help but wonder if Samantha's absence had something to do with their fight. As he returned to his truck, doubts gnawed at him. Maybe Samantha was avoiding him after their heated argument, and perhaps she left right after her shift ended. Trying to make sense of the situation, Dwayne couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. Little did he know that this unsettling feeling was only the beginning of a baffling and harrowing mystery that would leave an entire community on edge. What happened to Samantha Koenig, the responsible and hard-working barista who disappeared without a trace? The unsettling events of that cold winter evening only marked the beginning of a perplexing enigma. As the hours passed and Samantha Koenig remained elusive, her boyfriend Duane grew increasingly anxious about her well-being, despite their recent heated argument. With no response to his concerned text messages, Duane's worry intensified. Unable to ignore the gnawing feeling in his gut, he made a difficult decision. He would visit Samantha's home to ensure she was safe. Upon arriving at her house, Duane was greeted by her single father, James. Worriedly, Duane explained the situation, hoping for some reassurance. However, James was as puzzled as Duane. He hadn't heard from his daughter either and had no idea where she could be. Samantha and her father had always shared a close bond, confiding in each other about their lives. Her sudden absence without reaching out to him directly was highly uncharacteristic, and James couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. Together, Duane and James sat in the kitchen, attempting to contact Samantha via phone calls and text messages. After what felt like an eternity, a message finally appeared on Duane's phone. The text from Samantha carried an undertone of distress and frustration toward Duane, indicating that she needed time to think and would be staying with friends for a few days. She also asked Duane to inform her father of her whereabouts. As James read the message, his concern deepened. This behavior was unlike Samantha. 
They had shared an inseparable bond since she was a toddler, and she had always been open and honest with him. Why would she choose to communicate her plans through Duane and not directly with her father? The shadows of uncertainty descended upon them as they tried to comprehend the puzzle before them. Where was Samantha? And why did she appear to be deliberately avoiding her father? The eerie silence enveloped the room as they struggled to make sense of the cryptic message. As the night wore on, Duane and James knew they needed to act swiftly. Samantha's mysterious disappearance demanded immediate attention. Together, they resolved to seek the truth, determined to bring Samantha back to safety. As the night wore on, neither Duane nor Samantha's father, James, received any further communication from the missing girl. The silence weighed heavily on them, amplifying their concern for her safety. It was unthinkable for Samantha to ignore her loved ones when they were genuinely worried about her. With sleep eluding them, the two men persevered through the restless night, continuously reaching out to Samantha in the hope of a response. But each attempt went unanswered, deepening the mystery surrounding her sudden vanishing. As dawn broke, an anxious James wasted no time and headed straight to the Anchorage Police Department to file a missing person report for his beloved daughter, Samantha. Filled with worry and heartache, he sought the help of law enforcement to find her. Upon receiving the report, a concerned officer from the Anchorage Police Department decided to inquire about Samantha at the Common Grounds coffee shop, where she had last been seen. To their surprise, the coffee shop's owner had recently been informed by another barista working at the kiosk that a robbery had occurred, and nobody could reach Samantha. Promising to provide the security footage from the previous night, the owner assured the officer that any information they could find would be shared with the police department. Meanwhile, other officers began reaching out to Samantha's friends and family in search of any leads, but the efforts yielded no information about her whereabouts. Curious and concerned, some officers visited the Common Grounds coffee kiosk in person. To their relief, they found no signs of a struggle, either inside or outside the kiosk. However, a chilling discovery caught their attention. Beneath the counter lay an untouched panic button, which should have been pressed if any trouble had arisen. As the investigation intensified, the peculiar details surrounding Samantha's disappearance began to form a disconcerting puzzle. Why had she disappeared without a trace? And why hadn't she activated the panic button if there had been a robbery? As the investigation into Samantha Koenig's inexplicable vanishing intensified, law enforcement initially considered the theory that she had robbed the Common Grounds coffee kiosk and then left voluntarily. However, this explanation left several perplexing questions unanswered. One major mystery that confounded the police was how Samantha physically escaped from the coffee shop. She didn't have a car that night, and the freezing weather and non-walkable nature of Anchorage made it implausible for her to have simply walked away. If her text message was true, and she was seeking some time alone with friends, why hadn't anyone heard from her? The truth began to surface when the coffee shop owner provided the police with the security footage from that fateful night. The video, devoid of audio, started around 8 p.m. on February 1, 2012, the night Samantha went missing. It showed Samantha alone inside the kiosk, diligently attending to her duties with a cheerful demeanor. Suddenly, the footage captured a figure approaching the window from outside the camera's view. Samantha turned to acknowledge the person's order, seemingly unbothered. As she prepared the drink and attempted to serve it, an abrupt change occurred. Samantha stepped back, raising her arms in apparent surrender, though the cause remained hidden from the camera's view. Within moments, she switched off the kiosk lights and assumed a crouched position with her back to the window, where she remained motionless for nearly a minute. Slowly rising to her feet, she walked towards the cash register, her actions becoming more enigmatic with each passing second. The puzzling behavior recorded on the security footage raised more questions than answers. Why did Samantha suddenly react with alarm? What had prompted her to turn off the lights and assume a defensive posture? What occurred in those moments hidden from the camera? The inexplicable events on the video deepened the mystery, leaving investigators grasping at straws to decipher the truth behind Samantha's disappearance. As the police dug deeper into her life, they would soon discover shocking revelations that would turn the case on its head. As the investigation deepened, the surveillance footage from the Common Grounds coffee kiosk revealed a terrifying sequence of events that shook the core of the case. In the grainy video, 
Samantha was seen opening the cash register and removing some money. To everyone's shock, she handed the money to a shadowy figure on the other side of the window. Moments later, the enigmatic figure leaned into the kiosk and appeared to tie Samantha's hands, rendering her defenseless. The footage provided little clarity regarding the intruder's identity. Cloaked in darkness, he wore a large sweatshirt and kept his face hidden beneath a hat pulled low. As the mystery man forced Samantha to stand at gunpoint, he marched her out of the employee door, across the parking lot, and into a waiting white pickup truck. The vehicle vanished into the night, leaving law enforcement and the FBI to grapple with their inability to trace the perpetrator. Despite tireless efforts and support from Samantha's father, James, the investigation continued to hit dead ends. The grainy surveillance footage provided no concrete leads to identify the assailant who had taken Samantha, leaving the authorities frustrated and desperate for any breakthrough. Meanwhile, the news of Samantha's abduction spread like wildfire across Anchorage. James's impassioned plea for help garnered an overwhelming response from the city's 300,000 residents as they rallied together to find the missing young woman. National news outlets picked up on the story, bringing Samantha's plight into the spotlight across the country. As days turned into an agonizing wait, Samantha's family, friends, and the entire community held on to hope, praying for her safe return. Yet with every passing moment, anxiety and uncertainty loomed large over the city. Would they ever find Samantha? And what horrors might she be enduring at the hands of her abductor? Samantha Koenig's disappearance had captured the nation's attention, with her story making headlines everywhere. The power of the media drew strangers from all over to contribute thousands of dollars, creating a substantial reward for any valuable information about her whereabouts. However, despite the growing reward and the mounting interest from national news outlets, the case remained shrouded in mystery as no one came forward with significant leads. Weeks passed and Samantha's loved ones received no communication from her. Desperation and fear lingered in their hearts, leading them to grapple with the unknown fate of the young woman they cherished. Then, a glimmer of hope emerged on February 24th, three weeks after her disappearance, when Duane received an unexpected text message from Samantha's phone. The text directed him to a particular sign inside a nearby public park. Urgently, Duane and James shared this crucial information with the police and hurried to the park, arriving a mere 15 minutes before law enforcement. Stepping through the park's gates, they followed the main trail until they reached the bulletin board indicated in the text message. There, they found a Ziploc bag containing a chilling ransom note. Tacked alongside the note was a black and white photograph of Samantha. In the picture, she appeared dazed, her expression vacant as if she were not looking directly at the camera, but rather off to the side. Interestingly, in the same photo, a man held a copy of the Anchorage Daily News newspaper. The ransom note held an eerie sense of urgency, and its contents were deeply disturbing. For the first time since Samantha's disappearance, a thread of communication was established. However, it wasn't the reassuring message her family had longed for. Instead, it raised more questions and uncertainties. As Duane and James stood before this enigmatic display, they couldn't help but wonder about the man in the photograph. Who was he, and what connection did he have to Samantha's disappearance? Why had he sent this unsettling image to them? With the ransom note in hand, the police now had a new lead to follow. But time was of the essence, and the race to uncover the truth had intensified. As the chilling puzzle continued to unravel, they were about to confront a nightmarish reality that would send shockwaves through the entire community. As the investigation into Samantha Koenig's baffling disappearance progressed, a cryptic ransom note emerged, accompanied by a proof-of-life photograph dated February 13, 2012. In this chilling image, Samantha's captor held up a newspaper as evidence that she was still alive at that time. Despite the gravity of the situation, the knowledge that Samantha was alive as of last week provided a glimmer of relief to her worried father, James, and all those involved in the case. The ransom note demanded an immediate deposit of $30,000 into Samantha's account. To secure her release, James followed the FBI's advice and deposited a portion of the ransom money as instructed. The FBI opted to use the account to track any attempts at withdrawing money, with the hope of pinpointing Samantha's captor. Days later, three separate withdrawals were made from different ATMs within Anchorage. 
Each time, the FBI rushed to the scene, but the perpetrator, disguised in a ski mask and large sunglasses, managed to elude capture. The withdrawal activity from Samantha's account eventually went silent for over a week, and during that time, no word or sign of Samantha's whereabouts reached her family or the authorities. Then, on March 7th, a breakthrough occurred. More withdrawals were made, but this time they were from locations far from Anchorage. The ATMs recorded transactions in Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, raising hope that authorities might finally be able to trace Samantha's captors' movements. With the FBI in pursuit, they rushed to the distant ATMs upon notification of the withdrawals. However, despite their swift response, the trail remained cold, and the captor continued to slip through their grasp. The investigation had become a desperate race against time, with every step leading to new locations and further questions. Where was Samantha being held captive, and who was this mysterious and elusive figure behind her abduction? As the days turned into weeks, the family's anguish and the community's fervor to find Samantha intensified. In the relentless pursuit of Samantha Koenig's captor, a breakthrough came when surveillance videos from Texas revealed a white Ford Focus sedan driven by the masked man with sunglasses. Authorities quickly alerted Texas patrols to be on the lookout for the vehicle, and on March 13th, a vigilant patrolman spotted the car parked in a hotel lot. The patrolman patiently waited for a man in his 30s to emerge from one of the hotel rooms, and once he got into the Ford Focus, the officer discreetly followed him, looking for any reason to pull him over. As luck would have it, the man was driving just two miles per hour above the speed limit, providing a legitimate cause for a traffic stop. Approaching the driver's side window, the patrolman asked for the man's identification, and he handed over an Alaskan driver's license identifying him as Israel Keys, a 34-year-old resident of Anchorage. Recognizing the significance of the moment, the patrolman called for backup, and shortly afterward, Israel Keys was taken into custody. The subsequent search of Keyes' car uncovered alarming evidence. Among the discoveries were a ski mask and clothing that matched the description of the man seen in the ATM surveillance videos. The trunk also contained a gun, as well as Samantha's cell phone and debit card, linking Keyes directly to her abduction. With Israel Keyes in custody, authorities were determined to unravel the chilling truth behind Samantha's disappearance. However, they soon discovered that they were dealing with a meticulous and cunning predator, Keyes was adept at covering his tracks and avoiding detection, making him an elusive and dangerous foe. As the investigation progressed, a chilling portrait of Israel Keyes began to emerge. He was a serial killer who had committed a series of murders across the United States, leaving no discernible pattern to his crimes. Keyes meticulously planned each abduction and murder, often traveling long distances to commit his heinous acts. Throughout the course of the investigation, Keyes revealed disturbing details about his other victims, drawing the authorities deeper into the dark and twisted mind of a cold-blooded killer. His actions left a trail of horror and heartache across the country, with Samantha Koenig's abduction being one of his most brazen and audacious crimes. As authorities confronted Israel Keyes with the overwhelming evidence connecting him to Samantha Koenig's disappearance, he initially denied any involvement. However, when faced with the undeniable proof of his guilt, he finally relented and agreed to reveal the gruesome truth of what transpired on that fateful night. Keyes made a bizarre and haunting request before disclosing his confession. He demanded an Americano coffee, a peanut butter Snickers, and a cigar. Once these items were provided, he began to recount the harrowing events surrounding Samantha's abduction. His chilling account was so disturbing and graphic that the FBI has yet to release the full transcript of his confession. According to the version of events that was made public on February 1st, 2012, Keyes approached the Common Grounds coffee kiosk with the intent to rob it. Expecting to find a young employee inside, he encountered Samantha. Initially planning only to steal money from the coffee shop, his sinister plot took a dark turn, and he decided to abduct Samantha. As Samantha turned to prepare his drink, Keyes seized the opportunity. He discreetly brandished his gun and aimed it at her, announcing that it was a robbery. Frightened, she complied, raising her hands in surrender. He quickly tied her hands and forced her back inside the kiosk, where he silenced her cries for help by jamming napkins into her mouth. With Samantha now under his control, 
Keyes marched her outside to his waiting car, and they sped away. Once inside the vehicle, he removed the napkins from her mouth, warning her that any escape attempts would have dire consequences. The chilling details of Keyes' confession painted a horrifying picture of the young woman's abduction, unveiling the depth of his malevolence. As the investigation delved deeper into Keyes' heinous crimes, a sinister pattern began to emerge. He was a calculated and remorseless serial killer, whose gruesome acts had left a trail of victims across the country. The full extent of Keyes' dark legacy and the depths of his depravity remain shrouded in mystery, as the FBI has withheld some details from public disclosure, recognizing the potential harm it could cause to victims' families and the public. As Israel Keyes confessed the horrifying details of Samantha Koenig's abduction, the depths of his malevolence became ever more apparent. After forcing her into his car at gunpoint, Keyes warned Samantha that any attempts to escape or seek help would result in her death. Obedient and terrified, Samantha complied with his demands, all while trying to maintain her composure amid the unimaginable terror. Taking control of her phone, Keyes sent a text message to Samantha's boyfriend, feigning her presence elsewhere to buy himself time. He then revealed his plan to hold her hostage and demand a ransom from her family. Despite Samantha's honesty about her family's financial situation, Keyes was confident that he would extract money from them one way or another. Throughout the night, they drove around Anchorage with occasional stops to allow Samantha to relieve herself or Keyes to smoke a cigar. The hours ticked by, and the weight of Samantha's captivity intensified with each passing moment. Around midnight, Keyes returned to his house, instructing Samantha to hide in the back seat under tarps. He warned her not to attempt an escape, as the consequences would be dire. Inside his house, Key's girlfriend and ten-year-old daughter slept peacefully, completely unaware of the chilling secret he held in his car. Just hours later, Keyes and his daughter were supposed to embark on a two-week luxury cruise to New Orleans. Returning to the car, Keyes blindfolded Samantha and led her to a shed behind his house. There, he secured her to an upturned bucket with a rope around her neck, anchoring the ends to the shed. The nightmarish reality of her captivity set in as Samantha found herself imprisoned in the darkness of the shed. In the days that followed, Keyes unleashed a campaign of sadistic brutality upon Samantha, subjecting her to unspeakable horrors. Throughout her captivity, he showed no remorse, no empathy, only a perverse sense of power over his helpless victim. The tale of Samantha Koenig's abduction was but one chapter in the larger, terrifying narrative of Israel Keyes. As the FBI and law enforcement officials continued their pursuit of justice, they delved deeper into the twisted mind of a remorseless serial killer who had left a trail of tragedy and heartbreak across the country. As the horrifying details of Samantha Koenig's abduction unfolded, it became evident that Israel Keyes was a remorseless predator capable of unspeakable cruelty. In the grim and claustrophobic shed where Samantha was held captive, she faced a terrifying ordeal that would test her strength and resilience to the limits. Pinned to the wall by a rope, with loud music blaring to drown out any potential noise, Samantha was warned repeatedly that any sound she made would result in her death. Despite the unimaginable terror she endured, Samantha showed remarkable obedience, understanding the grave consequences of defying her captor. In a twisted display of manipulation, Keyes offered her cigarettes and reassured her that everything would be fine once the ransom money was delivered. He provided space heaters to keep the shed warm and locked her inside before returning to his house. There he checked on his sleeping daughter and girlfriend, seemingly calm and relaxed. However, the facade of tranquility would soon be shattered. Keyes returned to the shed with water for Samantha, pretending that he had spoken to her father and arranged the ransom. Believing her nightmare was ending, Samantha allowed herself a moment of relief. But in a sickening turn of events, Keyes violently tied her up again, crushing her hope and amplifying her terror. Israel Keyes reveled in the power he had over Samantha, toying with her emotions and manipulating her sense of hope. Throughout her captivity, he displayed a chilling lack of empathy, treating her as a mere pawn in his sadistic game. Behind the walls of the shed, Samantha's family and the authorities continued their desperate search for her. The clock was ticking, and with each passing moment, the urgency to locate her intensified. 
As the harrowing tale of Samantha Koenig's captivity continued to unfold, the true extent of Israel Keyes' sadistic nature was revealed. Inside the confinements of the shed, Samantha endured an agonizing roller coaster of emotions manipulated by her captor's cruel mind games. The fleeting moment of relief and hope came when Keyes pretended he had spoken to Samantha's father and arranged a ransom. Seemingly on the brink of escape, Samantha's trust was shattered when Keyes violently retied her up, pulling the strings of his diabolical puppet show with malevolent pleasure. For Keyes, it was all about control and dominance. Cutting her handcuffs and undoing the necktie was a calculated cruelty designed to inflict confusion and despair upon his victim. Samantha's hope for release was nothing more than an illusion, a sickening trick played by a man who reveled in her suffering. As investigators probed deeper into Keyes' twisted psyche, they unraveled the dark motivations behind his heinous acts. His sadistic pleasure derived from tormenting Samantha, testing her resilience, and destroying any semblance of hope she clung to. Throughout her captivity, Keyes remained cold and calculated, revealing a chilling lack of empathy or remorse. In his mind, Samantha was merely a pawn in his malevolent game, and her life held little value beyond the sadistic pleasure he derived from her suffering. Behind the scenes, Samantha's family and law enforcement continued their frantic search for her, driven by a desperate determination to find her before it was too late. As the clock ticked, they faced the ominous reality of confronting a monster whose evil knew no bounds. As the horrifying events of Samantha Koenig's captivity unfolded, the darkness of Israel Key's soul was fully exposed. Inside the suffocating shed, Samantha faced a nightmarish reality, confronting the malevolence of her captor. Having played cruel mind games, Israel Keyes savored the terror he instilled in Samantha. Her resignation to her fate was evident, knowing the dreadful torment that awaited her. Keyes' indifference to her suffering was palpable, as he reveled in the power he held over her vulnerable life. After his twisted games, Keyes left the shed, sealing Samantha inside, alone with her fears and anguish. He returned to his house to ensure his girlfriend and young daughter remained oblivious to the horrors he perpetrated nearby. Satisfied that they were still asleep, he returned to the shed, ready to unleash his sadistic desires. Entering the shed, he was met with the sickening scent of urine and sweat, a testament to Samantha's unbearable distress. Despite her terror, she was defenseless against the relentless onslaught that followed. The harrowing reality of her captivity was beyond comprehension. Samantha's family and law enforcement officials continued their desperate search, their determination fueled by the urgency to find her before it was too late. But they were up against a monster who had sunk to the depths of depravity, devoid of empathy, and driven solely by the gratification of his malevolence. As investigators pieced together the horrifying puzzle of Key's crimes, they were left grappling with the chilling realization that Samantha's abduction was but one of many sinister acts committed by this remorseless predator. The chilling tale of Samantha Koenig's abduction reached its heart-wrenching climax as the true extent of Israel Key's depravity was exposed. In the suffocating confines of the shed, Samantha faced her darkest hour, confronting the sheer malevolence of her captor. Having subjected Samantha to unimaginable horrors, Keyes reached a pivotal moment of decision. Standing over her, dressing himself callously, Samantha mustered her strength and asked the haunting question, Are you going to kill me? Keyes's cold response left no room for hope as he confirmed her fears. Samantha's courageous plea fell on deaf ears. Keyes donned leather gloves, cementing his intent to end her life. In the face of imminent death, Samantha still attempted to reason with her captor, her stoic bravery commanding even his admiration. In the dark hours of the early morning, just before 4 a.m., Keyes sealed Samantha's fate. He ruthlessly drove a knife into her back before choking the life from her. In her final moments, Samantha remained silent, her strength and resilience evident until the very end. With Samantha's life extinguished, Keyes left the shed, locking it behind him, leaving behind a scene of unfathomable tragedy. He returned to his house, coldly taking a shower, unmoved by the devastating act he had just committed. In a final callous act, Keyes woke up his young daughter and prepared for a planned family vacation. The stark contrast between the depravity he had unleashed upon Samantha and the semblance of normalcy he displayed with his family was as haunting as it was repulsive. 
As investigators sought to piece together the truth behind Samantha's disappearance, they faced a chilling reality. They were dealing with a remorseless predator capable of seamlessly shifting between a doting family man and a merciless monster. In the aftermath of Samantha's tragic fate, the search for justice intensified. The haunting legacy of Israel Keys would continue to cast a long, ominous shadow on the lives of countless victims and their grieving families. The horrifying tale of Samantha Koenig's abduction reached its darkest chapter as the true nature of Israel Keys' monstrous psyche emerged. With a heart of darkness, Keyes subjected Samantha to unimaginable atrocities, inflicting pain and despair without a shred of remorse. After the devastating crime, Keyes concealed Samantha's lifeless body in his shed, meticulously crafting a twisted ruse to fool the world into believing she was still alive. As he set forth on a family vacation, the stark contrast between his malevolence and his seemingly ordinary family life sent shivers down the spine of those who would later uncover his true identity. Upon their return, Keyes resumed his gruesome ritual. Dressing Samantha in new clothes and applying makeup, he staged her to appear alive, creating a chilling proof-of-life photo alongside the Anchorage Daily News, intended to deceive those seeking her safe return. But Samantha was not Keyes' first victim. He was, in fact, a cold-blooded serial killer who targeted random individuals to quench his thirst for watching them suffer. Over the years, he had stashed kill kits across the United States, caches of weapons and tools designed to facilitate his deadly deeds. As investigators dug deeper into Key's dark history, the scale of his malevolence came to light. The horror he inflicted on Samantha was merely a glimpse into the nightmarish trail of destruction he had left in his wake. This true crime saga serves as a chilling reminder that evil can lurk among us, hiding in plain sight. As we grapple with the unsettling depths of Keyes' depravity, we bear witness to the strength and resilience of Samantha Koenig's spirit. In the final chapter of this haunting tale, we embark on a relentless quest for justice, seeking to unravel the web of darkness that Israel Keyes cast upon his victims and their families. Viewer discretion is advised as we navigate the unsettling depths of evil in this chilling story. The harrowing account of Israel Keyes' sinister crimes unravels an unsettling truth. He was a predator who reveled in the suffering of his victims, striking randomly and mercilessly across the country. Key's modus operandi was chillingly simple. He hid kill kits in various locations, each containing the tools necessary to carry out his heinous acts. Whenever the urge to kill overcame him, he would retrieve his kit and target an unsuspecting victim, indifferent to age, gender or circumstance. Everyone became a potential target in his twisted game. In the tragic case of Samantha Koenig, Key's intention to kill was evident from the moment he laid eyes on her at the coffee kiosk. His claims of a ransom and robbery were nothing more than manipulative ploys to instill false hope in his victim. Samantha's fate was sealed the instant she stepped out of that kiosk. Keyes confessed to killing Samantha, as well as an older couple in Vermont. However, his reign of terror would come to an end when he took his own life in his jail cell in December 2012, leaving behind a haunting legacy of unanswered questions. Though investigators speculate that Keyes may have claimed the lives of at least 11 individuals, the true extent of his murderous spree remains shrouded in mystery. A drawing he made in his cell hinted at possible additional victims, but the full truth eludes us to this day. As we grapple with the horrors of Israel Keyes' actions, we are reminded that evil can lurk among us, concealed beneath the facade of ordinary life. The tragedy of Samantha Koenig serves as a stark reminder of the importance of vigilance and the pursuit of justice in the face of darkness. Thank you for joining us on this chilling journey through the depths of human malevolence. If you found today's account informative, we invite you to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications, ensuring you never miss our weekly uploads. Your support is invaluable as we shed light on stories that need to be told. Until next time.